good, yes, I'm nice. So, Linton Fassell, thank you for coming on today, buddy. Yeah, no worries. Uh, really appreciate your time as always. I know you're short on it, but I really obviously wanted to get this uh, podcast done and get some questions going and get your insight on things. For those who don't know who you are, fire away, introduce yourself. My name is Linton the Swan Vassell, originally born and bred in good old England. Um, for you that, that don't know me, um, I like heavyweights, um, fighter for Bellator MMA, now making my debut at heavyweight, hopefully round, round October time, October, November. So just waiting to, to hear and find out what's what's next and who they got for me next. Cool, man. Uh, how come you've changed from lightweight to the heavyweight division now? Was you struggling with weight cutting or just literally personal preference? It's It's been a bit of both. I wouldn't say I've, I've been struggling with, with cutting the weight, mm. but I have I've wanted to always go back to heavyweight. Um, I started off fighting light heavyweight and heavyweight um, like 12 years ago. And then I found that I had a good run at light heavyweight, so I stuck at it. Um, I have been asking to go heavyweight over probably the last probably year or two now. And I feel like I've had two title fights with Bellator and they both haven't gone my way. So like now it's, you know, I'm 35 now. So I feel like it's, it's time for me to stop cutting weight and go into a fight, you know, fe feeling as good as, as I do in training camp. So... You know, it's um, it's going to be a good and a new experience um, for me and Bellator. You're in you're in good shape, man. I mean, I wouldn't I wouldn't be crying if I had that physique. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Thank you. For, even for a heavyweight, it's like fucking hell, chiseled like. Yeah, mad, I, I, I train hard, eat good. You know, I mean, you got to stay in shape. What sort of things are you uh, eating, like nutrition wise, for yourself? Obviously, is it like super clean? Or well, um, I'm sponsored by a company called Factor Seventy Five. So they send me stuff like but butternut squash, um, turkey mint, chicken, sweet potatoes, rice, salmon, all, all the clean, healthy, healthy living eating. Um, and on top of that, yeah, I eat, I eat clean anyway. I drink plenty of water. I try and, and keep my, my diet clean as possible with the odd cheat day here and there. There we go, man. There's well, the cheat, meal. <laughs> cheat meal. Cheat meal. Cheat meal, yeah. Day, meal. <laughs> Going in with like 12 pieces. But now, now, now I've, <laughs> you know, changed it up a little bit. It's more of a cheat day. <laughs> <laughs> so um, do you have any sort of like rituals before, like the night before maybe you fight? Is there anything in particular you do, like you're in the hotel room or whatever? What sort of uh, things have you been doing over the years that you believe have helped you be mindset ready in the ring? Um, for me, I don't really have like a ritual, but um, after I've made weight, usually um, I, I've got some food with, with my team um, and the family that, that come out with me, um, go back to my, to my room, have a little chill, a little sleep, and then go out again um, for, for the evening meal. Um, so I wouldn't say that's a ritual, but that's something that, that I, I do do. Um, I've been doing it my obviously pretty much my whole career, but I wouldn't say it's oh I have to do this I have to do that yeah you know sort of just a regularity you know that's kind of how yeah been so set again over the years. people come and see me my friends family so yeah we'll, we'll go out meet up get me out of the, the hotel room and um, get me some from thinking about the fight all the time so yeah. no that's good man I suppose because obviously do you still get like nervous or anything and if you do how do you cope with those nerves or You've been in the game a long time. Now is it just like yeah. another day, another day in the office? Yeah, again, it it is like another day. But yes, the nerves are still there. It doesn't matter how many fights you had. You know, you're, you're going to have them nerves regardless. Um, for me, it's not like I want to stop thinking about the fight. I, I feel like when I start thinking about the fight, I start visualising what I'm going to do um, or how the fight's probably going to go. Um, so yeah, I, I, it's not that I want to stop thinking about it. I feel I feel like my mind's pretty pretty clear anyway. I don't I don't have all that anxiety about about the fight going into it. So I, I'm I'm pretty good that way. Yeah. Do you have any like um, this is obviously 
could go it could go horribly wrong this question but do you have any like lucky lucky pants or socks or anything that you wear do you know, what I mean? <laughs> no. do you know like footballers I, I they like no. get their boots changed I, every every day or something like that every game Nah, again, I, you know, what, what will be will be. I don't think just because you wore lucky pants or lucky <laughs> T-shirt, lucky hats, you know, it, it, it's going to change the way someone, you know, you could, you could have your lucky pants on, but you could have been ill that week. Yeah. You know, it doesn't, doesn't mean you're going to win or, or, or whatever. So um, I don't have nothing special. I just, I just turn up and I just deal with the matter. Yeah, go, go and do your thing. Who's been your um, hardest competitor within sort of, uh, you know, your your fighting career? Because obviously he wasn't always at Bellator, was you? You was um, I can't even remember the company name before uh, um, before then. UC MMA, yeah, and um, UWC. The hardest competitor. I would. I, I, I've said it a number of times. The plane, plane going by. <laughs> um, I said it a number of times. It's, it's Emmanuel Newton. Um, we've had two fights, and pretty much I'd say he's my rival, but he's my friend as well. Yeah. Um, we've had two fights, but one apiece right now. And, um, yeah, he's, he's been the, the guy that's pushed me um, to my limits. So, um, the first fight we had, you know, um, went four and a half, oh, it went to the fifth round. Um, the second fight we had um, went, went the distance for three rounds, you know, so one apiece. Um, I'll definitely say he's, he's probably been my hardest competitor. Um, yeah, definitely say Manu Newton. Does it give you? Does he give you like a a little bit of a psychological push when you say like the second fight you were going to fight or whatever? Was there that yeah. like little psychological push where he's like, man, I've got to just put in that extra hour. Yeah. I, I want this win. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I give Emmanuel pretty much everything. In, in the first fight, and he survived, man, you know. Um, so going into that second fight, I had a great game plan, and, it, you know, it, and it worked perfectly. You know, I, I got the win, and um, I'm lucky he's not with Bellator no more because I would like that third fight. Mm. Hopefully he can make his way back there at some point, um, or we'll, we'll meet down the line somewhere. But, yeah, um, hats off to Emmanuel Newton, hardcore <laughs> kid. So how many times a week are you training at the moment? Pretty much every day, Monday to, to Saturday. If I've got a fight camp, then it's pretty much um, seven long. days a week. And then I'll take a day off when I feel like I, I need one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like a Monday would be MMA training in the morning. And in the evening, it'd be like um, hates kickboxing with Henry Hoof. Uh, our main um, striking coach. Um, Tuesday will be sparring, and then in the evening we'll be lifting. So pretty much our day has the morning class and then the evening class. And it's pretty much like that all the way through camp. Um, and then when you've got a fight coming up, you may add an extra training session in there, like maybe a run or maybe um, going to the, into the, the first session 30 minutes earlier and do some um, light rolling or something just to, you know, get them extra miles on the clock mm. and um, get yourself ready and the game plan right. So, obviously, you're in better tour yourself. What advice could you give for someone that's maybe trying to get there themselves? Like, is there a set route? Like, what did you do to kind of get you, get noticed and get picked and get brought in? Um, I wish I had the remedy for that. Um, for me, I just kept fighting, kept fighting, pretty much fought whoever they had, fought for minimum money. I was fighting for like $500, or sorry, £500 at the time. So that's for some fights, it's, it's not a lot at all. I was just fighting just to get the wins up and hopefully go for a big show. And I was fighting on UC, um, UC MMA. Um, I got the title, defended that I think two, three times. And then finally got a, a, approached by Bellator. Nice. Um, what, what I would say is, if you're going to do MMA or going to do something you have, have passion for, you know, there's going to be some sacrifices. And um, just keep going. You're going to have your ups and downs. I've won some, lost some, but I just kept going. And um, I still don't think I'm at my peak yet. I still don't think um, I'm at my best. 
So, you know, um, this next fight, man, I'm going to I'm gonna go in there and fucking smash some smash people. Them. Sorry for the swearing. <laughs> no, no, man. I swear I all the wait. time. I swear all the time, man. I can't wait, like, to go in there and bust some heads. Yeah, man, I get you a lot. Honestly, no, don't worry about the swearing. The more swearing, the better. It's explicit. It's good. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck all of you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm calling out every motherfucker right yeah, now yeah, yeah. let's do this baby <laughs> all of you get all of you so um do you have like a personal preference in the sense of fighting do you prefer like standing fight or do you prefer like the ground game what's your strongest Sorry, point I don't know what's that's all right man um yeah i don't know i don't know what's happening here i'm i'm a striker sorry there's me even saying i'm struggling i'm, I'm a grappler <laughs> yeah go in there take you down eventually and then I choke you out or ground and pound. That's always been my game plan. It's always been my bread and butter. Yes, um, I've been training striking. So obviously, you know, my last fight was a lot, lot of striking. But again, mm. I was fighting Phil Davis, you know, a guy who grew up doing wrestling. So I didn't want to obviously, you know, um, play into his game. So, you know, we, we, I, I, I stat stood up with him. Unfortunately, it didn't go my way. But yeah, bread and butter is 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 the is the, is the grappling, and yeah. um, I'm going back. Every time I go back to training, I'm always learning something new. So there we go. Just, just wait and see. You'll see something, some some new submission, some new some new ground game um, in my arsenal. So how did you get into fighting? Like, what's the story there? Like, is it something you knew you wanted to do, or did you just have a scrap one day and thought, man, I like this shit? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Well, um, my friend Cliff Hall, um, he used to fight back in the day, and he was always saying to me, come to the gym, get some training in, you're a big guy, you'll like it. I was like, no. I said no, probably for about a whole year. We used to play fight in the garden, um, and we actually uh, ended up um, having like a little MMA slash play fight, whatever. And I picked him up threw him to the floor and um, he was unconscious for a little while. Um, as soon as he woke up, he was like, you've got to come to the gym, you know? And for me to do that to a, a pro fighter uh, made me think I might have something here. So yeah, we went to the gym and that was it. Uh, I, I, fe I fell in love with the game. You know, I was picking people up, punching people, throws. So it, it made me think, obviously, maybe... There is a career in here. So, yeah, I think six months later, I had my first um, semi-pro fight, won that. Two weeks later, I had another fight, won that. And then about four months later, I had another fight after that, won that. So, I had won a title in between that as well. So, you know. Um, Made the right choice. I was, I was winning and in, in such a short, short time frame. Yeah. So, I thought I could make a career out of this. So... 12 years later, still doing it. Boom, I got in there. First fight, knocked that motherfucker out. <laughs> Second Whoa. fight, bop that motherfucker. Third fight, yeah. bop that motherfucker. <laughs> got that belt round my waist. I was hungry. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> 12 years how, later, I'm happen, back. Man. <laughs> yeah, Obviously, I don't. Started. Might and, not have been. And again, I, n I never went into fight. and I, I never... In a million years, thought I'd be, I'd be doing this. I watched it on TV, but it didn't really interest me in the fact um, to, to actually go and sign up myself. Yeah. So, what do you want to do? Like, what do you want to achieve in the sport right now? Like, what are your current goals? What's keeping you motivated? Exciting fights, and yeah, my, my goal hasn't stopped from from when I started being a world champion. I haven't been a world champion. I've been a champion on number of organizations that world title is um still number one on my list you know so i'm gonna get that world title at some point light heavyweight heavyweight light heavyweight is not out of the way but I, I'm, I'm coming so you know um the division best be fucking ready <laughs> get get that world title around my waist so do you believe in um this is kind of off on a little bit of a tangent obviously you said like the night before your fight, you'll sit there visualizing and blah blah blah. Do you like believe in the power of visualization to an extent, or are you more of a? Because there's a lot of people out there that are like the law of attraction or whatever. You know, like if you can think it, see it, believe it, achieve it. You know, all of that. Are you like a? I, I do. I do believe in that. Yes, I, I believe um, if 
you just go in the fight and just think it's just going to go your way straight off, you're, you're wrong, you know. Again, you have to visualise visualize shit. You might throw a punch, he might move and counter you. So, yeah, visualising, I feel, feel like, is, is, a, is a great thing. And I would say nine times out of ten, um, when I actually visualise something, it, it usually happens that way. You know, yeah. do you um do you yeah, meditate? Even, even if around? even if it's not the win that that I wanted, like even if I, if I say I'm gonna go for a one two and shoot or or something or for a one two knee, you yeah. know these things happen. Um, so yeah, you, visualizing is a, is a big big part of the of the of the sport. Are you into any forms of like meditation or anything like that, or is it too too much for you? Um, I haven't actually sat there and meditated, but I've I've been I've been told about it um it's something that, that I'm, i am going to start doing um, i haven't, do it, I haven't done it yet but yeah a, a lot of people have mentioned about it and um, said it's really good for the brain so yeah bro best way i can sum it up is just this a vacation for the brain do you know what i mean like i've had some weird weird experiences <laughs> meditating where i'm like what the oh, fuck really? yeah yeah like but it good you know good I'm not like meditating and going, oh God, why did I do yeah. that? It's always, always positive, man. But if you can try and try and implement it, man, like fucking, you know, like I said, it just brings peace to yourself. Oh, we've ended. Give me a second. We're getting back. Da da da. That's the first time I've had an end call. I'm going to ring it back. Sorry. Yo, that's right, mate. Uh, your webcam's What's not come that? up. There we go. Yeah, cool. sorry about that. That's <laughs> no, cool. That's cool, man. So you was like, this guy fucking talking about meditation. Beep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking change the subject. <laughs> it's cool, man. No, um, so who would you, who, if you could fight anyone on the planet, who would it be, basically? Anyone. Anyone on the planet. Dream fight. King Kong. <laughs> yeah. Um, on a real, I was always a, I, I still am a big, big fan of, of Bruce Lee. You know, um, it'd be nice actually to see how tough, how tough he really was. Yeah. You know, I know I'm a lot bigger than him, but you know, when, when you actually just watch, watch his movies, obviously when I was a young kid, it's, you know, you believe all that and you see the videos now and stuff, of stuff he did. Um, and yeah. Who's seen Big Boss? He's beating people bigger than me. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Bruce Lee. That's that'd be a nice little fucking scrap, wouldn't it? Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I'd have to him and mix him up. <laughs> and he'd just be like, "Hot <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go, and that one in punch. Yeah. Oh yeah, man. Have you seen up. seen that on stage where he's like, uh, does that one inch punch of some geezer and just sends him flying in a chair and yeah. shit? Yeah. Uh, and, and again, I know I know obviously watching it and and seeing that but i want to know if it's really is true like imagine yeah. to actually feel that from him um I, and yeah be, be that guy flying across the room rather than thinking it might be some like video play acting yes, shit, yes. i like yeah. to believe it is it is true but again i, I will never know because i'm never no. going to meet the guy it's a, it's a shame man what happened to him i mean um yeah have you seen uh like the, there's like 10 in- interesting facts about um bruce lee where like when they were recording him in films and that he was moving so fast that she had to slow him down and shit so, <laughs> i did hear the, that yeah yeah it's like how the fuck can you move so fast that the camera ain't even i'm like trying to do hand speed and shit and i'm yeah, like nah. yeah 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 <laughs> like punch it 10 times before you've even blinked yeah it's like i've just i'm sometimes i think to myself are people just coming out there and saying shit do you know what i mean because there's no way <laughs> of course yeah yeah that's a rumor start yeah. that's a rumor start he once caught a hundred flies in five seconds he's just like yeah but yeah man obviously um you know he's he's he was one of a kind i guess you know and no doubt his shit was real you've seen him with like nunchucks and ping pong balls yeah you know playing table tennis players and and all that other stuff man um Anyways, how did your family find it moving, like moving from England to Florida? How was that transition? Was it a difficult? Period oh, it's just me, or... man. Just me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. How did? But how did they um, find oh, it? How did my like my my family find you leaving yeah, them? Like, <laughs> they, they, they were happy for me. Yeah. Um, if anything, they like my mum, my sister were like, "You should actually just go out there and um, live," because I was coming back and forth, Florida to England. 
and obviously you know that's that's tiring and yeah. money um yeah, they're, they're more unhappy than you know and you know was pushing me to go and said yeah you might as well move out there it makes sense yeah save save the money as well do you know what i mean yeah um, i say pay, paying for a flight <laughs> Um, to come out here, and I didn't want to just come out here for fight camps. No, I, I, I feel like you don't get any better um, just coming out for fight camps. I feel like you need to be here and um, actually soak up the knowledge. How was the like transition for you? Like, was it was you a little bit like nervous at first? Was you thinking, "Fuck, like I'm in America"? Like, well, when I when I, when I first came, I was nervous, and then I, I felt like I was just right at home. Yeah, that first day I actually stepped stepped in front of um, Rumble, Rashad, um, all them guys. Yeah, I was nervous. I was like, shit, I see these guys on TV. <laughs> now I'm hey, actually man. Um, face-to-face with them, about to start sparring. <laughs> so, yeah. Fucking hell. It, it, it was nervous um, starting off, but again, now I'm, I'm now I'm at my home. This is home for me. Did you play it cool? Was you like, man, can, can I have your autograph? Oh, yeah. Like, poker face. <laughs> yeah. Poker face. <laughs> I don't know if I could, man. I'd be like, dude, please, sign my shirt. <laughs> Just, please. <laughs> yeah, no, I played that poker face. Game yeah. on now. Let's play. Do you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, um, do you have any ideas on, like, what you think could uh, improve the sport of, of MMA? Like, anything that could make it sa- uh, safer or better? Because, like, the UFCs at the moment, in my opinion, the UFCs kind of turn like WWE with the whole, like, Brock Lesnar, Daniel Cormier, uh, Cormier thing, you know. Is there anything you think could improve the sport anyway, so aside from all of that mumbo-jumbo? Um, again, they, they did that, obviously, for money and, you know, ratings. You know, at, at the end of the day, it's, it's smart because all the WWE fans are going to tune in to see Brock Lesnar. Yeah. Um, I would like to see, like, um, what's it called? I can't, think, I can't remember the word now. I'm looking for a union. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Fighters union. That. That. Yeah. That. That's what. That's what I'd. I'd like to see. You know. And like we get we just get medical, um, Medicare and that. You know. Like so we have to pay for medicals and stuff like that. Get a wage, at least. Yeah. It's strange, you know, isn't that, it? That, that would be nice. We probably get paid the, like the least out of all sport. Yeah. When you're probably in one of the most vicious. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's like um, no, but... that Michael Venom Page fucking tiger knee and that um, cyborg in the head. Yeah, pretty much nearly killed him. Yeah, and you're like, what the fuck? And like they're, you yeah. know, they're earning money, but they're not earning money. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's like wow, that's. But it shows you the love we do have for this sport. Yeah. That that could happen, and, and we we know the consequences, but we still do it. And... Yeah. You know, that, that it's nothing. They, have, they, they haven't changed it, and they probably won't anytime, nice. a, anytime, anytime soon. Definitely not in my my time life, anyway. It's a shame because my uh, lifetime. So. <laughs> it's a shame because you, people kind of like me. I didn't really know that. Like obviously, and now I think to myself, why ain't you getting paid like a regular sort of wage for you know? Because you're on a contract, I get. I assume you know you're on a contract and. Yeah. Why aren't you getting medical care at least paid for? Like, if you're getting fucked up, like an arm broken and stuff, because exactly, especially in America, like it's expensive. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you break yeah. your arm, like good good luck, you know, trying to pay for that shit if you if you ain't got the money. That's what I mean. So yeah, no, I agree with you. Maybe like hopefully one day it changes and the and fighters start to get a bit more uh, cover and and be looked after. Um, yeah, but give it another ten years, and I'll probably I'll probably do it. Yeah, what's the ranking system like at Bellator? Because a lot of people think the ranking system in the UFC is a little bit of a joke up and down. Is the ranking system fair in Bellator, or is it make money fights? You know what I mean, yeah. Again, they don't really stick to the rankings. To be fair, I, I feel like um, if you've got a name, then you're gonna you're gonna fight for for a yeah. title, or you make the money, then yeah, you're gonna fight for a title. I mean, for me, yeah, I, the fights I've won, yeah, I, I've got a title from that, from that. But I feel like a lot, a lot of other fighters get 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 to get title fights because of their name um, instead of you know building it their way up. Yeah, are you a fan? And of you know, it, it does work both ways. Obviously, yeah, because like I say, Gay Gay obviously he 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 won 
I think he was what five and oh, six and oh, before he even came to Bellator. Yeah. So obviously they gave him a t- world title fight. Yes and no. Maybe he should have won a couple more fights. I know he beat Semenko, then he got the title fight, but you know. Um, I get you, man. It's like. It, it, it is what it is. I'm, I'm not going to sit here moaning at the end no. of the day, you know. Because but obviously, yeah, if, um, if you was the big, if you was like massive, massive name, top draw, and they were going to pay you millions and offer you this title shot, you'd be like fucking sweet, innit? it? So yeah, and, and we all would. Exactly. Uh, so I guess that is, you know, it works the way it works, I guess. But you know, it's also disheartening when you're busting your bollocks off, you're you're knocking people out, you're earning your way up. I mean, Dustin Poirier is like a good example in the UFC. Yeah, it's like smashing people up, and it's like. What does he do now? Do you know what I mean? Like he's waiting for Conor McGregor and Khabib fight when realistically it should be Dustin Poirier versus Khabib because Conor McGregor ain't fought yeah. in two years. Do you know what I mean? Like from a, uh, a MMA hardcore fans' perspective, I want to see Dustin and Khabib because you know I want to see the guy that's earned the fucking right to be there, not someone who's yeah. been sitting on the bench for two years. Yeah, but yeah, again, they won't do that. It's, nah, it's money. money talks, isn't it? Money talks. Money. Cool, man. Well, um, thank you for coming on. We've been on for 26 minutes. Um, no no trouble, man. I know you're in a bit of a rush and stuff, and the time zones obviously have been a pain in the arse. Yeah, no, no trouble. Had fun. Um, anything you want to add is two minutes of your time is now, so you can fire away with any advertisement, sponsorship deals that you might have, advertise yep. the shit out of your social media. The floor is yours, my friend. Thank you. Uh, again, Mo Tugs, um, big up to 86ers. Hayabusa, Factor 75, um, Muscle Farm, Vassell's Beauty, um, big up to everyone that, that sponsored me, follows me, support, thank you very much, the support is real, one love to everyone, you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter under LDV underscore the swarm, thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Peace, man. I think I really appreciate you coming on. Um, I'll chat yeah, to you no off camera, topic. anyways, and uh, off off air. I'll chat to you for two minutes, anyways, just to recap. And um, yeah, I'll also drop your links in the description below so people can follow you and you know all of that other stuff as well. Um, yeah, you're perfect. you're on Twitter as well, aren't you? Twitter. Yeah, I'm on Twitter. Yeah. Boom. Cool. Right. Uh, thank you for coming on, man. I appreciate it. Again, no worries.